I'd like to call the April 3rd, 2014 meeting of the Board of Education to order. First item is the invocation. Ms. Etheridge. Good evening. I'd like to read out of Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, uh, Chapter 47. Argue for your limitations and they're yours. Many people spend a great deal of energy arguing for their own limitations. I can't do that. I can't help it. I've always been that way. I'll never have a loving relationship and thousands of other negative and self-defeating statements. Our minds are powerful instruments. When we decide that something is true or beyond our reach, it's very difficult to pierce through this self-created hurdle. When we argue for our position, it's nearly impossible. Suppose, for example, you tell yourself, I can't write. You'll look for examples to prove your position. You'll remember your poor essays in high school or recall how awkward you felt the last time you sat down to write a letter. You'll fill your head with limitations that will frighten you from trying. In order to become a writer or anything else, the first step is to silence your greatest critic, which is you. I had a client who told me, I'll never have a good relationship. I always mess things up. Sure enough, she was right. Whenever the, she met someone, she would without even knowing it, look for reasons for her new partner to leave her. If she were late for a date, she would tell him, I'm always late. If they had a disagreement, she would say, I'm always getting into arguments. Sooner or later, she would convince him that she wasn't worthy of his love. Then she would say to herself, see, it happens every time. I'll never have a good relationship. She had to learn to stop expecting things to go wrong. She needed to catch herself in the act of arguing for her own limitations. When she started to say, I always do that, she needed to stay, say instead, that's ridiculous, I don't always do anything. She had to see that arguing for her limitations was just a negative habit that could easily be replaced with a more positive habit. Today she's doing much better. When she reverts to her old habit, she usually laughs at herself. I've learned that when I argue for my own limitations, very seldom do I disappoint myself. I suspect, suspect the same is true for you. Thank you. Hey, could we now have a moment of silence while keeping in mind those who died recently at Fort Hood? Thank you. Uh, next Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Blackstock. Thank you, Chairman Dami. It's my pleasure to introduce Olivia Williams, daughter of Beth and Rusty Williams, to lead us in our pledge. Okay, would you please rise? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and the school spotlight this month is on Jarvisburg Elementary and Principal Steve Blackstock. Chairman Dobney, members of the board, Superintendent Scholler, thank you very much for the opportunity to brag a little bit on Jarvisburg Elementary School. Before I hand the program over to our students and guidance counselor, I did want to mention, just remind everyone that the district started their school-wide book last Wednesday or Thursday. I hope some of you are finding time to read that book. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with it at our school. I have to say my favorite chapter so far has been the fourth chapter, um, which is subtitled The Most Important Person in the World. I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with that. Um, but I'm not going to comment on it too much, but all I can say is that if Betty Burney had met our guidance counselor, she probably would have written that chapter very differently. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ron Hall, I'd like to introduce, he's going to talk to you about our character education program at Jarvisburg. Mr. Hall. First of all, I'd like to say good evening. Again, my name is Ron Hall, and I have the distinct honor and privilege of being the school counselor at both Jarvisburg Elementary School and Dr. W.T. Griggs Elementary School. But tonight, I'm here to represent Jarvisburg Elementary School. The mission statement of the Curtuck County School says that we want to establish a world-class educational system, and more importantly, a system that produces students of character. At Jarvisburg, Character is the hallmark of everything that we do. Our character education program is based on the North Carolina General Assembly's 
Student Citizens Act of 2001. In that act, the General Assembly gave us nine character traits, traits that every school in North Carolina should implement in its character education program. Tonight, nine of our students are here, and they would like to share with you those traits, those principles given to us by our General Assembly because we believe these are the traits and principles that make Jarvisbury Elementary School second to none. And before we call our first uh, recipient, I'd just like to ask the audience if you would just hold your applauses until all nine of our students have presented. And we're going to start this evening with Miss Brianna Farrell. Good evening. My name is Brianna Farrell. In August and September, we focused on responsibility. Because I'm a responsible student, my teachers trust me. I can be relied on, and I'm always dependable. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Kaya Anderson. In October, we focus on respect. Respect is an important way of being good and kind to others. I show respect at home, in school, and in my community. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ariana Jones. In November, we focus on kindness. I show kindness by caring and always wanting to help others. A little kindness goes a long way. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Annabelle O'Donnell. In December, we focus on fairness. As a student of fairness, I give my peers equal respect. I treat others like I would like to be treated. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kevin Green. In, in January, we focus on integrity. As a student of integrity, I'm honest with my family, my teachers, and my peers. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Carl Closer. In February, we focus on courage. Courage helps me make good choices, do what's right, and stand for truth. Thank you. <laughs> good evening. My name is Yasmin Owens. In March, we focus on judgment. Making sound decisions is the quality of good judgment. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Daniel Walker. In the month of April, we focus on perseverance. I am a winner. I will never quit, nor will I ever give up. Thank you. <laughs> good, good evening. My name is Olivia Williams. In May, we focus on self-control. I am in control. I am responsible for my happiness. I take charge. Come on, EOG, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> At Jarvisburg and Griggs, when a student makes student of the month, not only do we recognize the student, but we recognize the family. The family is dedicated and designated as family of the month. And not only does our principals give a beautiful certificate to our students, but we also give a certificate to the parents, thanking the parents for their outstanding leadership and their guidance, because we believe that outstanding character begins at home. All of the certificates of our students and our parents are placed on bulletin boards in our hallways, because we want every person who comes through our doors, we want them to see the outstanding character of our students. Also at Jarvisburg and Griggs, we present medals. Napoleon once said that a man would give his life for a piece of ribbon. So when a student makes Student of the Month, they receive the Character Medal. The final part of our character education program focuses on honesty and integrity. This award is named after our 16th president. We call it the Lincoln Award for honesty and integrity. Each month, teachers canvass their rooms looking for students who walk in the footsteps of our 16th president. When those students are selected, they receive the Lincoln Medal. The medal has President Lincoln's face embossed on it, and they also receive a beautiful certificate with President Lincoln's face <laughs> embossed on that certificate. Also, we've partnered with President Lincoln's personal library in Springfield, Illinois. 
In the beginning of the school year, they wrote letters to both of our principals, thanking them for implementing this outstanding program, thanking the teachers and staff for executing this program, and more importantly, congratulating our students for receiving this award. Tonight, we can honestly say that at Jarvisburg, 89% of the students who walk those halls wear either the Lincoln Medal or the Student of the Month Medal. So we would like to say tonight, these are the qualities and traits to let us know that we are striving to be a world-class educational system. And more importantly, all of these traits given to us by our General Assembly elects, the world know that Jarvisburg Elementary School stands second to none. To our superintendent, to our chairman of the board, distinguished members of the school board, to the faculty and parents and students that's gathered here tonight, from all of us at Jarvisburg Elementary School, thank you and good evening. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them now. Don't have a question, but I have a comment. Yes, sir. I've got to, you know, watch you in action down there at Jarvisburg. And, yes, sir. You know, I've seen you at Jarvisburg and Griggs, and I think it's tremendous what you're doing for our students. Thank you, sir. Just, just incredible. And I'd also at this time like to thank Brianna, Kaya, Ariona, Annabella, Annabelle, excuse me, Kevin, Kryle, Daniel, Olivia, and Yasmin. You all did a great job. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you once again. Okay, next item, April 3rd, work session update. Uh, earlier this afternoon, we heard uh, from Carrie Dixon about our English language learners, which same as English as a second language. She, uh, you know, works with approximately 30 different students, and the languages that she works with them on include Spanish, Mongolian, Chinese, and Russian. She has one incredible job. Uh, also, we heard a presentation of school improvement plans from Central Elementary, from Dr. W.T. Griggs Elementary, and Curry Tuck County High School. Uh, we also received another copy of the capital outlay budget review, and that will be uh, voted on later on. Then, uh, oh, one other thing that I've mentioned and there seems to be some misunderstanding about Common Core and that that is a state mandated curriculum. You know, we have no choice in teaching the Common Core. And it's been mentioned that maybe we ought to do away with Common Core, make that a local decision. If we did, we would lose $21 million out of approximately a $39 million budget. Okay, at this time, uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, uh, student board member reports. We'll start with Thomas. Good evening, board. Um, this past month has been very exciting for uh, our schools. Uh, our FCCLA at the high school just returned from their competition this week. Uh, they competed in Greensboro and they came back with a bundle of medals to show for their efforts. Uh, Rachel Bommel. Rachel Balmer uh, won the silver medal in recycling renovation. Celeste Tross and Brian Siphus were awarded in gold medals in food innovations. Lauren Bone and our own Katie Trailer won a gold medal in uh, nutrition and snacks. Uh, so again, congratulations to those students. And last Friday, um, we had students from J.P. Knapp Early College, the high school, and Moyoc Middle um, all compete at Shoan University in the regional math competition. So, um, and we had some people s uh, qualify for states. So congratulations to them. Also, in countywide news, our board is now accepting applications for uh, new student board members as Rick and I will be graduating soon. Um, and interested students can get that application from their guidance counselor. And I believe the deadline is th the 31st of this month, or the 30th, excuse me. 
Um, and also, as Mr. Blackstock mentioned, we have started our The World According to Humphrey um, reading project, so I hope everyone's participating in that. And one last shout out to the Spring Musical, which will open next Friday. It's going to be a great show, The Music Man, so I hope everyone can come out. Now I'll pass it on to Katie. The, CCHA, the CCHS baseball team won yet, yet another game last night at first flight, bringing their record to 9-1. and one. They're having an awesome season, so come out and support the Knights. Their next home game is next Tuesday, beginning at 4.30 with the JV game. The Lady Knights are having a great season as well. Pitcher Claire Esso pitched a no-hitter in their game this week. They'll be playing at home on Tuesday. Our track team will host the conference meet at home this Wednesday. And several Currituck athletes who qualified for regionals will be competing. Our Lady Knights soccer team won against Manio, Manio last night. And our golf team is competing today at the Carolina Club. As you can see, with spring front finally here, athletics at CCHS is very busy. And now to Rick. Thanks to, lot of, thanks to lots of hard work, Currituck County Middle School's Battle of the Books team has placed fourth in the region. In the last month, J.P. Knapp Early College's FBLA team attended st the state competition where every single member of the team was recognized in one way or another. And in particular, our own Alexander Carter is now the state parliamentarian for FBLA, which is a pretty big deal. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome all the rising freshmen who are going to be receiving their acceptance letters to Knapp in the next week or so. That's really awesome and exciting for those kids. Thank you, Rick. Um, along with our FBLA trip, um, we had uh, a group place in the parliamentary procedure competition and are going to nationals, which we're all really excited about. Um, and I have the privilege, I didn't say hello, hello. <laughs> it's nice to see you this evening. Um, I have the privilege of announcing that the uh, Jarvisburg Elementary students and staff were treated to an amazing World of Animals assembly uh, presented by JAGS, which I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that stands for, but it was a par uh, parent organization, and um, that was on March 14th. The students and staff interacted with a tortoise, a python, a chinchilla, and a five-month-old wolf puppy, um, <laughs> and more. That sounds really exciting. <laughs> um, also, selected students also attended a water safety presentation by members of the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary on March 25th. And members of the Auxiliary also presented older students with a lesson on flag etiquette, which is very important. Um, I also have the privilege of announcing that JP Knapp is holding a Got Soul project. Uh, the student government is collecting shoe, uh, shoe donations for the area. Um, any type of shoe is accepted as long as they come in a pair. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, just make sure they're in good conditions and they will be distributed throughout the area and up into Hampton Roads. Um, so clean out your closets with that spring cleaning and donate shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, happy April and I think that's all I was supposed to announce. <laughs> awesome. Thank you and I will listen to the rest of this wonderful program. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda, overnight field trip request. Yes, we have one request for the CCHS JV and varsity softball tournament. They'll be traveling to Greenville um, April 18th and 19th. Do I have a motion for approval? So move. Do I have Action. a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Next, consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next, uh, teacher support resolution. And I was going to stand up to do this, but I don't know if I can stand up that long. <laughs> okay, teacher support resolution. Whereas the Curry Tuck County Board of Education values its teachers and believes they are deserving of sufficient compensation, and whereas teachers who attained a master's, doctorate, or other advanced degrees have historically been rewarded with additional salary supplements, thus encouraging their continued growth and training. And whereas 
Since 2008-2009, the General Assembly has frozen all step increases on the salary schedule and provided only a one-time across-the-board salary increase of 1.2% to teachers. And whereas, as a result of the step increases, uh, as a result of the step increases, freezes teachers today that are earning the same salary during their first five years of teaching. And whereas the General Assembly has eliminated salary supplements for masters and advanced degrees for teachers who have not obtained such degrees by the end of the 2013-14 school year. And whereas the current state of teacher compensation in North Carolina has made it extremely difficult for school boards to recruit and retain strong teachers and offer employment packages that are competitive with neighboring states and the private sector. And whereas the Appropriations Act of 2013 requires local boards of education to offer new four-year contracts only to 25% of those teachers who have been employed by the local board for at least three consecutive years and who have shown effectiveness as demonstrated by proficiency on the teacher evaluation instrument, and this is known as the 25% legislation, and whereas the 25% legislation requires that the new four-year contracts include a $500 annual pay raise for each year of the four years, four-year contract, and requires that each teacher who accepts such a contract raise and raise shall cease to be employed pursuant to General Statute 115C 325 and voluntarily relinquishes career status or any claim of career status. And whereas the selection of only 25% of the Curry Tech County Schools teachers pursuant to the 25% legislation could create perceptions of unfairness and further lower teacher morale. And whereas the General Assembly has only funded the first year of the four annual pay raises provided in the 25% legislation, and whereas at least one lawsuit has been filed challenging the constitutionality and statutory elimination of the career status for teachers who have attained career status and for teachers who may receive career status, and the court has yet to rule on the merits of the career status lawsuit. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Curry Tech County Board of Education respectfully requests that the General Assembly take the following steps to improve teacher compensation and thus make North Carolina a more attractive state for teachers. One, provide sufficient salary increases to the teacher's salary schedule so that all teachers are adequately compensated. Two, reinstate yearly steps so that teachers in their first five years of teaching are not held at the same uh, salary for that five-year period. And three, reinstate the master's degree salary schedule for any teacher who obtains a master's in either education or their teaching field. And further be it resolved that the board opposes a 25% legislation and the resulting unfair pay structure that it requires. Adopted this third day of April, 2014. Do I have a motion for adoption? I move. Okay, I have a motion, second? I motion, second. Okay, I have a motion, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And hopefully this leads the teachers to know that the Board of Education really backs them. Okay, next uh, we'll hear from Janet Rose, teacher and vice president of NCAE, Curry Tuck Chapter. Good evening, Chairman Dalvey, members of the board, Superintendent Scholler. There's a lot of folks here with me tonight. Could you all please stand? Would all the teachers please stand? These are just a small portion of our dedicated faculty and staff that we have here in the schools. We started this by signing a petition asking you to oppose this legislation, and we are just in awe at all that this resolution says. We thank you for your continued support. We thank you for all that you do for the children of Curry Tech County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next uh, public comment session. The public comment session is a time when an individual or a group can address the board about our schools. This is not a time to speak about issues or concerns involving identifiable personnel or students. 
Matters of this nature should be submitted in writing to the superintendent and your concerns will be addressed. Individuals or groups will be called in the order in which they signed up and will be asked to limit the remarks to three minutes. And when you come up, please state your name and address. And uh, recently, the uh, county commissioners have installed in the uh, courthouse here a signaling device to let people know, you know, when their three minutes are up or about to be up. Anyway, the uh, yellow, when the yellow light comes out, you have 30 seconds left to, you know, complete your remarks. So since this is new, I felt I needed to say that. <laughs> Okay, first uh, up, Will Craddock. Good evening. My name is Will Craddock. I live at 182 Bromley Road, Knott's Island, North Carolina. And um, I'd like to see us have a world-class education self, uh, system, much like the gentleman spoke before, Mr. Hall. Um, and what I'd ask of you as our elected leaders is that, uh, excuse me, my name's Will Craddock. I live at 182 Knott's Island, North, uh, Bromley Road, Knott's Island, North Carolina. And what I'd, I'd ask of you as our elected leaders is to help us achieve a world-class education system. And in doing so, upon our new budget that's going to be, you know, adopted here near in May for the 2014 and 2015 school year, I would ask that you not forget the eight missing teachers in the 14 combination classes that basically equated to 1% of last year's budget. I would also ask that you consider not rating on the state any longer. Eight years ago is a long time. I would ask that you look at finding another 1%, thus 2%, and give these good teachers a raise, and also retain the good teachers, and possibly attract more good teachers. So I would ask you to give that some great consideration. In addition, explore other opportunities where funding can be found. And I thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Ginger Brinkley. I'm not as tall as Will. My name is Ginger Brinkley. I live at 190 South Currituck Road, Currituck, North Carolina. I have two boys that attend Central Elementary School, and next year I will have all three of my children attending Central. Uh, the invocation this evening was interesting to me. Um, I will not lie and say that I liked it. I do not believe that we need to ignore our faults or pretend that they do not exist. You need to figure out what they are, identify your weaknesses, and address them. And one such weakness currently infecting our hallways is Common Core. You may not have adopted it. You may not have selected it. However, you are elected to represent the students, the parents, and the teachers of Currituck. Common Core math is a problem and not a good one. It is not friendly. I don't need number sentences or boxes or pictures to figure out that 2 plus 2 equals 4. It will always equal 4. It is your responsibility. It is your privilege to serve the people of this community. I am begging you, imploring you to do more research as to the impact of Common Core in our school, as a curriculum, and what it is doing to our teachers. They are wasting time and effort trying to re-educate themselves to teach basic arithmetic to six, seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds. It is a major issue that is not being addressed. It is your job to fight for our students. You are the voice of the parents. So to wipe your hands of it and say, we'll lose $21 million, is offensive as a parent. You are our elected officials. We should not be bound to federal money constitutionally. You need to represent the local community. If they're going to take 21 million, then we need to find it somewhere else and do what is best for our students, parents, and teachers. That is all. Thank you. And we can't respond, right? Oh. Shoot. Okay, next information items. May work session will be May 1st, 2014 at the Knapp uh, Professional Learning Center at 5 o'clock. Uh, the May board meeting will be later on, May 1st, at the historic courthouse right here at 6.30. And now for board member comments. 
And we'll start with Ms. Kraft. Okay. Um, I had the privilege this month of visiting J.P. Knapp and uh, Shawbury Elementary School. Um, Shawbury Elementary School had their second grade economics project, and I got to shop till I dropped. <laughs> Um, I even bought a bracelet. I didn't wear it tonight because it doesn't go with my outfit. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was awesome. The kids were very well informed. They knew um, their jobs and what, what they were there for and um, were very quick to tell me um, all about the economic portion of it. Making change, um, understanding um, the whole concept of the shopping. At J.P. Knapp, I toured the... Um, what is your, the Bose oh, equipment room? <laughs> yes, he invited me to stay, but fortunately I didn't have on the shoes that I was able to stay. Right. I'm sure they would. know you keep them in the car. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you could get a pair of shoes that are donated. Yeah, maybe so, maybe so. And um, also, um, we have a Curry Tuck Jr. At, in our school, Mary Santa, who wrote a novel in a month, Ne Mo Ro Mo, I think is what it's called, um, and she um, won in the National no Novel Writing um, Contest. It was in the School Life and the Daily Advance um, April 1st, so I was just wanted to commend her. And Alexandria Carter had a unique birthday party that we have not Address. did not know or address, she asked her friends and family for something very unusual as a gift for her 17th birthday this year. She decided to forego traditional gifts and she invited her friends to join her at the Curry Tuck Animal Shelter in Barco and the gifts that she got went to the homeless animals. Oh, wow. So um, I just think that's wonderful. Thank you. I think the animals enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they did. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. Um, make sure you stock up on sunflower seeds because you never know when you're going to need to catch a hamster. So I am keeping up with the reading. <laughs> Ms. Gaddis? Um, I also visited J.P. Knapp um, with Mr. Bass Knight. I had a very nice time walking around the school, um, enjoyed touring. I actually went to that school when it was the middle school, um, so it was kind of reminiscing for me. I realized that the gym was not nearly as big as I remembered the gym being, but Mr. Bass Knight reminded me that I was a little shorter then <laughs> um, and much smaller. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I, um, the kids were very engaged. The teachers were engaged. It was really great to walk into the classrooms and see everything that was going on. Um, Lastly, Mr. Bass Knight um, told me about the March Madness program that they had going on where the students were competing against each other throughout the month of March to create a team that then competed against the teachers. And I have to say they had their um, competition the other night and the, stu the teachers were very excited to say that they won. They actually beat their students. Um, and are holding their own. They were all up and walking. So that's, that's good. <laughs> so it was really nice to visit there. Um, let's see. Congratulations to Katie and Alex for their wins. I think Rick got a little left out. It's my understanding he has some big news to announce today, too, that I was hearing a little bit about, about your tuition, school, Summatively, thanks to several different sources, <laughs> my education at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill is fully paid for. Oh my God! <laughs> I just I wanted to make sure he got he got recognized for that because he's worked hard to get all of that pulled together, and he, I think he just found out today because I ran into him in the hallway when I was at the school. <laughs> um, so I caught him off guard a little bit about. It. I'm sorry. I apologize. Right. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight to support the teachers um, in passing the resolution that we did. I just want you all to know that we do stand behind you guys. Um, and the Jarvisburg kids were great tonight. They're learning great life lessons, um, and it shows that they're putting them to full force, being able to stand up here in front of this room full of people at that age. You know, we have adults that have a hard time doing that, so thank you for having us. Ms. Etheridge. Yes, um, my heart's beating a little bit fast right now. 
Um, just to tell you, I'm a little bit passionate about the teachers here in Currituck County. I love our teachers. I love our students. I love Currituck County as a whole. And I take offense at somebody criticizing the board. We work for the people of Currituck County. Yes, we do. And we make the decisions on behalf of Currituck County students. If someone, instead of criticizing, bring me solutions. Don't tell me about the problems we have. We already know that. And we're already doing the best job that we can. Bring me solutions. I'd love to see them. I'd love for you to tell me how we can find $21 million. Bring it to us. Tell us how we can do it. Come on. But I don't want to sit here and have someone tell me that we're not doing a good job and we're not doing the best for Currituck County. I take offense at that. On another note, I was able to visit NAP, early college. Um, I went out to the physical fitness night because of my son-in-law, and he said, oh, it's, it's nothing. It's, you can do it. It's, it's no big deal. Well, I thought I was going to have a heart attack and um, got through it, got through it just fine. The next day I couldn't walk, but, <laughs> but um, I got through it because I didn't want to show defeat. <laughs> And uh, yesterday I was able to attend the uh, basketball game between the staff and the students, and that was, that was a great time as well. I took my, uh, one of my granddaughters to the game so she could see her mom and dad play basketball on the court, and uh, she loved it. So I thank you, and I thank the teachers that are here and the teachers that couldn't make it tonight. You're doing an outstanding job, and I just want to recognize you all and, and just please know that we're behind you 100%. And I feel like in my heart that the morale in Currituck County, the schools, has changed. And I feel like it's, it's turned around, and I don't think we've seen that in many, many years. So I think we're moving forward. I think we're doing positive things, even though the state is, is uh, holding us back a little bit. It's, it's going to come around and um, hang in there. And I think, I think some changes are going to be made. Thank you. Mr. Simmons. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a chance to go to Myrtle Beach with our high school cheerleaders. Uh, they uh, competed in a national competition. <laughs> I told you guys before I left, there was 1,200 screaming 14 and 15 year olds. And I sat through it for two days and enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> I, was, I was so proud of our girls from Currituck. They came in third, and the two teams that beat them were professionals. Our girls were outstanding. And uh, I'd love to get them to a board meeting because I want to introduce all of them. I was so proud of them. I had a chance to go to two schools this, uh, this past month. I went to Shawboro with uh, Miss Craft to the mall. And, got to shop and one of them offered me a shave and a haircut and a, I said I've already shaved this morning. That was in the beauty salon in the mall. Uh, I also had a chance to go uh, by the high school and, and walk through there during the power hour and see what our kids were doing. I was very impressed. I uh, had a chance to go to several baseball games, extremely cold. I can't wait till it gets warm out there. But uh, we have an impressive baseball team, and we have an impressive softball team. And if you get a chance, I keep telling people, when you see those lights on, you need to go out there. There's something good going on in Currituck. Uh, one more thing real quick. Thomas Poston over here did not tell anybody he was approved to go to Harvard. <laughs> I, I know he hasn't decided where he was going to go, but I mean. He was accepted there. He was accepted. <laughs> I didn't send my application there, I can tell you. Um, last but not least, uh, once again, teachers, I'm so glad y'all showed up tonight. You know, somebody the other night said they, they thought they insulted me when they called me a teacher advocate. Uh, mm -mm. I, I took it as a badge of honor. Yes, I am a teacher advocate. I am so proud of my teachers. I am so proud of our administrators, the janitors, everybody who works for our school system. We as a board know how hard you work. And thank you for being here, and thank you for helping us on this board. Great. Okay, I had the uh, privilege to tour Shawboro Elementary, Griggs Elementary, and once again, you know, I'm just completely amazed at the 
learning that goes on in the classrooms and how attentive you know the students are to the instruction it just it's great and they're having fun doing it I also had the opportunity to go to uh, Jarvisburg for the kickoff of the book the world <laughs> according to Humphrey and I mean they had a great video made and I see Rose and Iris who I guess were the two <laughs> behind that <laughs> and uh, was, was there anybody else or just you two that did it? Emily McDonald. Oh, Emily? Okay. But I just I just sat there and rolled during half of it. I mean, it was so funny. Jeez. I also got to see a part of the golf tournament the other day. That the uh, I think we came in first out of five teams. And one, well, second place team I think was like 60 strokes oh, off. Wow. That's how good our team is this year. And lastly, I'd once again like to thank, you know, Alexandra and congratulate her for being named the parliamentarian for the state of North Carolina, FBLA, and her team that came in second in the parliamentary procedures, which included not only herself, but Alexis Harrington, Cassidy Kiefer, and Daniel, is it pronounced Brodix? Brodix. Okay. And good luck in the next level of the competition. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. I'm sorry, I'm going to intercede really quickly. It was fantastic to compete with them, and they're slightly reminiscent of how you handled things, you know? <laughs> it, was, it was a good moment. <laughs> that means you both are, or you, both of the groups are doing fantastic. Good. <laughs> and Rick and Thomas, congratulations. And with that, do I have a, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a second. Have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meeting closed.